to your most educative and enlightening program, Healthy Living, aka your personal preventive measures against COVID-19 and other diseases. On this program, we give you home tips and we bring experts to educate and advise you on a thousand ways to stay healthy so you can live longer. Thank you for joining us. Healthy Living, a program that gives you home tips on everything about health and bring experts to also educate and enlighten you on a thousand ways for you to stay healthy so you can live longer. Today, we are talking tattoo. Yes, tattoo is also known as body crafts or getting inked as the americans report it today we will tell you all you need to know about tattoo here are some facts you should consider before getting a tattoo getting inked seems to be the newest trend among the people of this millennium and why not most of them say Tattoo are fun and cool. However, for people with tattoos or people hoping to get inked soon, the effects of the cool crusade might be a resourceful panda. Though most people jump at the prospect of getting inked, few actually stop to think of any long-term consequences. Is body art truly great? and even inspiring as many may say? Apart from the social stigma against it, there are more serious things to consider before getting permanently inked or marked. Just listen. Did you know that wearing tattoo will make people look at you negatively? Did you know that people coming from the orthodox setting might look at it like you are wayward when you're wearing a tattoo. Did you also know that tattoos may be a negative sign and cause a lot of emotional harassment even from the people close to you? Do you know that tattoos may be perceived as a mark of unprofessional behavior even in your workplace? Oh, you didn't know all that? Now you know this. So, make the best of the information because they are actually at your fingertips. Health Hazards of Tattoo Unwanted Allergy Reactions Negative reactions to tattoo is common. For some, it may be cause short-term irritation, but for some other, they might not be that lucky and their mag might stand permanently. Cancer. Before getting a tattoo, you should be aware that cancer is a hazardous side effect of tattoos. The most common complication is skin cancer, which does not raise its ugly head until it is too late. Scalioids. Not all scars are cool. Your tattoo may cause undue scarring around the area then you are stuck with a permanent mark. You may have an appearance of keloids around the tattooed area. Keloids are essentially an accumulation of collagen in an area and may cause redness and bumps and nasty scarring. Beware of HIV and hepatitis. When getting a tattoo, please ask yourself, is it worth the risk because needles may cause severe diseases such as HIV or hepatitis. So, 
before you take it at all. Consider this health hazard and make up your mind whether you should tattoo or not. And for those of you who already have tattoos on your body, consider this fact because you might be on your way to some serious health hazard. That is so amazing. Now that we have educated and enlightened you on the side effects, the health implications of getting a tattoo, we hope you will make the best of the information that we have given out to you today. We should discuss HIV. HIV, this issue has been on for a while, but there is still need for us to do more talk on it. So please um, educate us more on HIV. What is HIV? Thank you very much. Uh, HIV, <clears throat> from the name, means human immunodeficiency virus. HIV is a viral <clears throat> organism that affects human body. When it enters into the human system, it attacks a very vital system, which is the defense system or immune system in the body. It weakens it in such a way that the body system has nothing again to protect it. Therefore, giving room for other invaders. And this can be compared like a city being guarded by soldiers when these soldiers are attacked first, then the city is now prone for other intruders. Mm. And then they will destroy that nation. Mm. So the, these fighters in the body, the immune system, they're usually the T helper cells, mm. you know, or you can also say, call it uh, CD4. Mm. So when they are truly destroyed, uh, destroyed or attacked and damaged by the HIV, in, in the system, surely the body is weakened and cannot function again the way it should be. And HIV also be, it belongs to the family of retrovirus. Mm. It's a retroviridae. Mm. Yes. And this is a, is a family of RNA virus. Mm. You know, it has the capacity of taking over the genome of the human body when it enters and converts it to produce more copies of itself because the human body has the DNA. Yes, but then, and this HIV is a RNA virus. So when it comes in, it uses an enzyme, you know, it can use it to, it's, it's called reverse uh, transcriptase, can use it to now convert itself and make more copies of itself. That's why it doesn't take time, it multiplies. Hmm. And if nothing is done, it can lead to another sy syndrome, which we call AIDS. Mm. Yes. In, you know, many people will just think, oh, AIDS is the same as HIV. No. HIV leads to AIDS if nothing, no intervention is done. Okay. Yes. So if there's a medical intervention through maybe treatment, then the person who has HIV infection will not lead to AIDS. Mm. But if there is no intervention, nothing is done over a time because there will be a window period. After a window period, and uh, the attack is still going mm -hmm. because it's within you don't see it yeah yeah after a while then the person comes down into AIDS and AIDS is known as acquired immune deficiency syndrome it's like a collection of diseases many other diseases are mm -hmm. set in and then the immune system is already depleted you know compromised highly compromised mm -hmm. then that's this condition wow wow <laughs> so insightful okay um the, what is the difference between HIV and AIDS? Okay. Yes, actually, just as I, I explained a little, mm -hmm. you know, HIV is the virus itself, human immunodeficiency virus. Okay. And AIDS is acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Okay. It's a syndrome, collection of different diseases. Mm -hmm. And that's happens when HIV infection enters into the system, destroy the immune system, mm -hmm. then that person will be weighed down because other invaders, other diseases can set in, like TB, different things can set in, and then the person comes down to 
eight. Mm. So that's the, the, the high, mm. the end rate of that. All right. Huh. That's interesting. All right, um, sister, um, how, what's the mode of transmission of this um, um, HIV? Okay. Actually, we have uh, about four basic modes of transmission okay. of HIV. The major mode is when someone who is uh, infected has an unprotected sex with another person. You know, so maybe someone without infection we have unprotected may have unprotected sex with an infected individual, so the person can get it, and that's the major means of transmission okay. then we have another means which could be through mother to child okay. you know and that can occur sometimes either during uh, pregnancy period or during delivery or during breast milk mm -hmm. you know breastfeeding that's why we encourage our mothers who are coming for at nature because here we have comprehensive program for hiv you know and we run that in conjunction with the ihvn Initially, we used to do with the Caritas Foundation of Nigeria, okay. but now it's with the IHVN. So it's very comprehensive and it's called Prevention of Mother to Child Transmission, okay. PMTCT. When the woman comes in and is discovered to be HIV positive, the person is monitored mm -hmm. so that the viral load will be highly reduced. Mm -hmm. And then the CD4, which is that defense mechanism will be increased mm. you know so if it's increased in that case the person can deliver a negative child mm -hmm. but if the person is not on drug and is not monitoring all these parameters then the person may end up exposing the child to contracting the infection mm -hmm. so that's the major second way another way of uh, contracting this uh, infection is through blood transfusion mm -hmm. you know sometimes some people are you know they come to the hospital they are very anemic they need transfusion if really is an emergency case, they may not bother to take care and screen the blood, mm. you know, but it's advisable before, no matter how the situation, the, the situation is, you must screen the blood mm. and be sure that it's free from all this infection, especially the HIV, as we are talking about it now. Mm. So if the person is put HIV infected blood, then the person will come down mm. with HIV. Mm. Then another means is also through um, sharp sharp injuries okay. you know what is obtainable in the past sometimes they reuse needles that i mean it's no more done but it's also an awareness that people when you go to hospital pay attention to what is being given to you if they are about to collect your blood watch and be sure that it's a new needle that are tearing from the pack and using for you and dispensing uh, disposing immediately mm. you see so because if it's infected needle because some sterilize it but you may not fully destroy the virus mm -hmm. in that in needle mm -hmm. so if it's infected they use it to collect your blood or to give you injection then you can may come down to it mm -hmm. and some women who go to salon they go there they do you know like fixing of needle of their wevon and all that if the the needle the uh, hair dresser is using it's not sterilized. It can mm. use it. Maybe perhaps the last person that was treated had H has HIV. It can mm. be also transmitted to you. Right. So it's always advisable when you're going to salon, carry your own kit mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that you do it. And mm. some people go to park where a malam will use one blade to cut many people's nails. Mm. You see? So these are different ways you expose yourself, or one exposes herself, you know, to contracting infection, HIV infection. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> that is so informative. <laughs> Thank you so much, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Um, let's briefly talk about how will one know that he or she has this virus that is being infected? Okay. Actually, uh where if one is infected, as I said earlier, he has an incubation period. Yes, yeah, sometimes the incubation period may last up to a month, three months before he's seen, you know you know is manifested in the laboratory not physically because some people can even have this virus for up to nine years or 20 years mm -hmm. according to statistics mm -hmm. before showing it wow. you know depending on the immune system if the person's immune system is strong it can sustain for a long time mm -hmm. yes so but uh, for that's why we advocate that people should go for lab tests mm -hmm. so when you come to the lab that's the only means of detecting whether you have it. Mm -hmm. And in the lab, we have what we call screening tests. Okay. Yes, we have, uh, we use a, a kit we call the, the Tamin. We also have stack pack, 
and we also have unique gold. We start with the determine. If determine shows positive, then you have to check again with another a second uh, kit, which is uni, um, start pack. If the start pack also shows negative, uh, negative, the determine shows positive, start pack shows negative. It means you are getting a discordant result. You now need a third one, which is called, you can be unigold. Okay. Unigold will now be used to test the same blood. If unigold says negative, it means it's negative, it's going to be two to one. Mm -hmm. And that third pack you are using, the strip, is called the tiebreaker, because the other one that are in two, okay. that in a kind of <laughs> the same ratio, but when the third one comes, so the third one, whatever result it, that it shows, will now be the result you have representing. Mm. Apart from that, you also do confirmatory test. Confirmatory test is more of a molecular, you know, investigations like PC, using use of PCR, polymerase chain reaction, chain reaction. So that one will confirm exactly whether it's HIV or is it any other similar viral infection mm. because it will check the genome and the sequence of the gene. Okay. Yes. So that's what we do here. How can one prevent this or say from contacting it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, we advocate that people practice what they call, you know, some which we say ABC prevention mechanism. The A means abstinence. That's the way because we have seen from what uh, I explained earlier that usually through unprotected sex okay. with an infected person. That's the major means of contracting this infection. Mm -hmm. So we encourage that especially on married people, men, women, young girls and boys, to abstain until they marry. And for the married people, the second B mm -hmm. to play its own role, be faithful to your partner. Okay. Maintain your partner, be faithful to your partner. And then the C aspect is use of condom. The use of condom in the culture, we don't really advocate that mm. because we encourage that you should practice the first two. Oh. Yeah, so the use of condom is more applicable with the married people because sometimes when they are infected, they still need to live their normal conjugal you know, life. So we advise that when they are meeting, they can use condom to meet mm. unless they want to achieve pregnancy. Mm. And before they achieve pregnancy, they must have done their viral load and their CD4 counts. Mm. So if the viral load is reduced, is is reduced, uh, maybe to some people even go to even almost detect non-detectable. Mm. That because we have other means of also detect uh, checking the that load. Mm. You know, you can check and then you know, it's not detectable at all. Mm. It means the person is, I mean, the immune system is good. Mm, okay. Yes. Then if the CD4 count is a, above twenty. Uh, uh, two thousand copies per meal. You know, if it's able, it could be up to like hundred thousand copies. Then it's also it's also very good because the immune system is up. Okay. So the immune system has to be up, and then the viral load will be reduced. It means the person is good to go. Hmm. Yes. So in that case, they can achieve pregnancy. They can go off condom, meet together, and achieve pregnancy, and go back again using condom until the child is delivered okay. and they also have to comply with adherence in terms of treatment they have to follow their drugs mm. because it's very very important you know some people when they uh, stop taking their drug they can build up resistance mm. in that case the drug will not work again for them okay all right mm. so we are talking a b c <laughs> abstinent yes um, be faithful, be faithful and, and you, you, oh wow wow <laughs> that's very 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 enlightening okay um uh, when one is um, already infected, is it clear? Can they cure it? Is it curable? Mm -hmm. and all that? Yeah, actually, uh, scientifically, HIV is, is, non, is not curable, but it's manageable. Yeah. Yes, you manage it with the treatments. Okay. Yes, we have different treatments. We have like first line regimen, second line regimen, and third line regimen. And most of our clients, they're all in you know, first line antiretroviral regimen and with that because science has gone far into getting initially when it it came nearly you can see it, somebody taking up to one two three uh, tablets at a time but now it's just a single formulated into one single tablet hmm. the fair regimen hmm. and they have to be consistent 
in taking it. Hmm. So whenever you are in the time, we encourage them to have a specific time so okay. they have to take your medication and you live healthy human life. You have to give us uh, like a final advice. What advice do you have for us generally? What do we do in case of this uh, HIV thing? Just advise us. Sir. Okay, actually the advice I will give is that we should make effort to prevent contracting HIV infection because prevention is better than cure yeah. and it's no more the way it used to be that when you have HIV you think it's death penalty no mm -hmm. somebody can still live a full human life that's why we say live positively with the HIV by living a good life and try to prevent getting even another strain because we have other strains mm -hmm. you know so you don't say okay you already have it you continue to now live your life no maintain live a healthy life eat well balance meal and take your medication and go we keep you safe thank you very much thank you. oh there you have it that is so educative and enlightening we have heard from the expert and now that she has spoken to us we believe that she will take her counsel and her advice and from today begin to live a good life so that you can stay healthy and live longer That is so amazing. All this information right on this program, Healthy Living, AKA your personal preventive measures against COVID-19 and other diseases. Now, let's take your opinion on tattoo. What do you think about tattoo? As you can see, I don't have any. It's something I will not even advise anyone to do. Yes, I believe even in the scriptures it's written not to mark yourself. So I believe a body tattoo is not good. If I may add, it's a sin according to the scriptures. Tattoo is not good. I don't know what they see in tattoos. Welcome back. If you are just tuning in, you are on to your most educative and enlightening health program. Remember to stay safe. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water. Keep your hands sanitized with hand sanitizer. Avoid crowded places. If you must go out to public places, please wear a mask. If it's not for your sake, Wear it for the sake of your loved ones because we know that a lot of you do not like wearing the mask. Wear it so that your loved ones will not contact the disease and it will not spread. Keep maintaining the physical and social distancing as directed by NCDC, WHO and the federal government. Remember that you can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on the screen. To watch this program again, log on to our YouTube channel as displayed on the screen. To be a part of this program for sponsorship, advert placement, and partnership, the number on your screen is the one to contact. I am Nelly Juicy and I will see you around.